This is the Swarm and Shoot football show with me, Manny Matsakis, the head football coach at Defiance College. We feature Defiance College football and everything that influences our program. This show is brought to you by our friends at Big B Coffee right across campus on North Clinton Street. I'm actually having a cup right now, so uh, everybody uh, check it out on YouTube and um, you can see the video of the cup and um, how delicious this beverage is. Uh, get the finest coffee beverages, even tea, in Defiance, as well as great pastries, breakfast sandwiches to start your day off, and you can even get a pick-me-up like a lot of our coaching staff does in the afternoon. I'd also like to bring on board the maker of this fine apparel right here, uh, and not not just Nike, but we're talking about BSN Sports, all right? I'd like to bring on board our latest sponsor, BSN Sports, and Rob Held, and his sales team are the professionals you need to get in touch with for all your sporting goods and apparel needs in Ohio. Not only do they work with high school and college sports teams, they also deliver outstanding apparel to businesses so they can brand themselves in a first-class manner. This is episode number 35. Our special guest today is Javon Johnson, our defensive coordinator and defensive backs coach here at Defiance College. Today's topic is regarding the development of our defensive backs. Defensive backs are often the last line of defense. The position in and of itself can be played on an island or in support of other members of the defensive unit. The defensive back positions we're going to talk about today are the cornerbacks and the safeties. Coach Johnson, how you doing? I'm doing all right. All right, let's do this. All right, love defensive backs. I mean, for a variety of reasons. I mean, we, I, earlier I mentioned they're the last line of defense. I mean, the thing about defensive backs that I've noticed in, in my career just watching them is if, if they're great, they basically have shut a portion of the offense down. Mm -hmm. And if they're not, uh, they get exposed, and everybody in the stadium knows it. It's almost like it's like a kicker on a last-second field goal. If he makes it, he's a hero. If he doesn't, uh, not so good. You yeah. Know. But uh, you know, w what do you uh, w when you're developing defensive backs? Okay, and you got a bunch of guys coming into you know spring ball coming up, and um, how do you? differentiate between which ones which positions guys can play in the secondary when you just when you're when you, the very first day you're working with guys uh you, you kind of got to get an understanding of of their background uh what they played in high school um what they're comfortable with uh because the techniques are a little bit different the mindset is for sure different um the corners are guys with good footwork faster quick twitch Mm -hmm. uh, can live on the island. Safeties are guys that can can make checks and uh, do a little bit of different variations of things. They're like the quarterbacks on the defense. So guys get comfortable from experience of what they've been doing for a long time. Corners typically can transition to play safety a little bit easier mm -hmm. than a than a safety can to play corner. So oh, you got to kind of okay. get a feel for or what they're good at and what their skill set is by drill work and. Uh, looking at different things, how they carry themselves, the way they move, uh, the way they use their feet and technique and things like that. Oh, okay. So when you're doing this and you've got this group and, and you know, you were just talking about the physical, some of the physical attributes mm -hmm. of, of the positions, how you start to break them up. Um, what's the mental makeup of the corner back? I mean, what, what, what are you looking for in a corner? Um, most of the corners, uh, you want guys that are confident. Uh, guys that have a short-term memory, uh, guys that can line up and, you know, try to win their one-on-one -on -one battles, and they live for that. They have that mental uh, psyche that they, they just want that adrenaline to flow that way. The guys that are, are typically, you know, always in your face, talking a lot of junk, mm -hmm. um, you know, guys that are, are, are very good with their feet, uh, can move in space and, and be able to, to stay in front of a guy. Um, you know, typically corners are 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 just guys that are are very fundamentally sound um, technicians, um, guys that know their assignments and can do it to the best of their ability and go out there and, and get the job done. And 
ultimately it comes all comes back to being able to play on the island because being out there on that island is yeah. is a difficult task for anybody and you got to be able to do it for 60 plus minutes yeah and there seems to be a lot of uh you know glory in the position in many ways you know it, it's the one of those positions on the defense like if you're a dude you're a corner you know, I mean, yeah. that, you know, and, 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 and what's funny is you've got the, in the national football, you see it all the time. And it's like, you know, these guys um, that are fantastic out there, like um, Revis, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's a great corner. Really good player right, right there. Well, what, and you sort of see that, you know, getting to the mentality side of it. I mean, his confidence. Wow. I mean, he, he don't back down to anybody, does he? No, and, and he's definitely not. <laughs> he's one of those guys that you just know what you're going to get in, get from him day in and day out. So he's not going to back down from anyone at all. Yeah, so so that's what you're looking for. That, that's in the, the mental makeup of what yeah. you would like from a corner. Yeah, uh, so I, I can see that. Now, how about as far as a safety goes? Because you're right. I, I can see the physical attributes being different. Mentally, what, what do you need? You know, what's the makeup of a great safety? Well, you know, safeties. Um, you know, they have to have good technique and, and good footwork as well. Uh, that just goes with playing the position. But a safety is like the quarterback on the defense. He has to get guys lined up, uh, be able to make adjustments because he, he can wholesale an adjustment uh, based on a call of what the offense does. Uh, so he has to make sure that he, he's knowledgeable about the defense. Um, he's like a, a corner with a little bit of a swagger of a linebacker because he got to uh -huh. be able to okay. he got to be able to tackle got to be really good in tackling in space um and he has to be very smart uh, but at the same time be able to come down and cover uh, so he got to kind of got to do a little bit of everything mm -hmm. uh, but he doesn't have to live on the island because he's ultimately the last line of defense he truly is and and i can see that and when you think of great uh safeties out there you know, the uh, Ronnie Lots of the world, mm -hmm. you know, guys like that. Um, what comes to mind in, in the way those guys, because some of those guys play for a really long time. Now, corners, it, I mean, you played for a really long time for a mm -hmm. corner. I mean, but safeties can can really, if, if they're healthy, can play for an extended period of time. Why is that? Uh, it's, it's just the, you know, some of them, the guys that do play for a very long time, they do an outstanding job of taking care of their bodies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, guys that that don't, you know, like a good, good friend of mine, Bob Sanders, um, you know, the physical aspect of it can take a toll on your body. Um, so you have to be taking care of your body at all times, you know, trying to stay out of the training room, mm -hmm. um, you know, because the the more you're available, the the longer you're going to be out oh. there on the field so that's an interesting viewpoint you would think oh i gotta take care of my body so i better get in the training room yeah so i mean it right? i mean it, it all depends <laughs> if you're if you got a nagging injury or or something that's bothering you yeah you want to be in a training room but you also want to you know make sure that when you're training you're doing everything you can to strengthen you know different parts of your body so that you know you don't have to endure that that physical aspect mm -hmm. that puts you in the training room who are the the you know because a lot of times safeties I think of like hitters I mean dudes it'll just come down and whack you mm -hmm. you know who, who are some of the best uh, safeties you have watched and seen you, that, that can do that lighted guy up you know you you got to think of guys like you know Sean Taylor mm -hmm. um, you know Ed Reed oh yeah Troy Polamalu you there know, you go these yeah. are are guys that will will light you up. But at the same time, when the ball's in the air, they're going to go get it. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's the, the makeup of safety that you want. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, Troy was unbelievable, right? Yeah, he was different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just thinking about him. Wow, you get chills. You know, you watch when he was with the Steelers, you know, what he was able to do. And just his mentality. And even, you know, if, you know running back breaks through, he's making the tackle. Yeah, you know, I for mean, sure, and, and, yeah, yeah, for sure, which which is critical, and and we'll get to that here in a little bit. But um, let's let's shift back to corners for a second. Now, you know, in the initial stages where you're developing a cornerback, mm -hmm. what are the actual skills you're developing? What type of drills are you putting? What are you what are you working with a guy? Because you've got a really young group, mm -hmm. right? And you you made significant. 
uh, progress last fall with them, considering that they just came out of high school. Now we've now you've got a spring to go into, so you know you've got a little bit more of a toolkit, to, you know, to execute uh, with these guys. Well, you know, when you got a lot of young guys, you just want to kind of keep putting tools in their tool belt. Um, you know, you start with stance and start. That's the most basic, fundamental, you know, assignment of a defense back is is stance and start. You know, you got to be balanced. You got to have good body position, um, and before you do anything, so that that's like the baseline of of a defense back. And then you kind of transition into um, their eye progression. You know, mind progression, being mm-hmm. able to to start to see things pre snap, post snap, knowing what your assignments are. Um, you kind of train them on those things because um, your eyes got to be in the right place. Because if you know where a guy lines up on the field and you can recognize it pre-snap, it's going to give you a little bit more of an advantage of what he can do, kind of eliminate half of the route tree based on alignment alone. Okay. Um, so you kind of start to, to train train them to do that. Do that. Um, and then you start training them on, on the mental toughness part of it mentally. Um, because at some point you're going to give up a play and mm-hmm. you can't get you can't go in the tank. So that short-term memory is developed just from, you know, pushing those guys to to you know bounce back after giving up a catch, you know, and letting them know that, you know, everybody's out there, you know, just as good as you are. So you got to be short-term memory at all times. Um and then you get into the footwork of it. Um whether you're playing press or off, you got to know the difference between the two. Um you know, good press corners are guys that are physical at the line of scrimmage, but they also use their feet and hands in, in sequence. You know, you move your feet, then your hands, and you don't jam and lunge. You got to yeah. kind of give ground and, and stay in front like you're playing a, a basketball-type technique. Um, guys that are good in playing off coverage are guys that are, are typically quick twitch, can, you know, get in and out of breaks really quick, um, you know, read a route. Um, very, 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 very attention to detail. Uh, good press corners don't really have to pay attention to detail because no. they they can get in your face and just kind of, you know, maul you and and try to get you off the route, mess up the time in between the quarterback and receiver. Whereas a guy who's playing off, he has to be able to read and diagnose things, be able to go in and out of breaks, uh, and and he has to do a lot of different movements, but. You know, you could train them on drills, and drills take care of everything. You just yeah. drill it, drill it, drill it. The amount of practice is paramount in, in all the things that you got to be able to do at corner. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, there's so much pressure on the position, but I, I do notice in practice you guys drill a lot. Mm-hmm. And and uh, you can see that, um, you know, when, when you are drilling it and, and you get the repetition – going in place that a lot of this stuff seems to lock into place and they oh, keep yeah. getting better you know oh yeah i mean uh, your drills got to be catered towards what you actually do uh, you can't just throw drills out there um if you never if those guys are never in that position mm-hmm. as well so if you if you got a defense that um that is specific to a certain movement those are the drills you want to kind of build that um the drill work around you want them to do things that they're going to do not things that they're not going to use yeah. So, so when you do that and, and you're working with that corner and you, you got you, maybe on one side, you got a guy that's really good lock him down man mm-hmm. type of guy. And the other one that can play off. Do you use both techniques uh, for each? Do you build off their strengths? How, or is it just the package you run on defense? I mean, how do you yeah, I mean, decide? It, you kind of you kind of try to get them to, to do what you want them to do around what you do defensively um but eventually you know if you got a guy that's a good press guy and a guy that's a good off guy you kind of want to let them play in their comfort zone got it so you don't want to try to mess them up too much but you know you got to you got to work them and try to build off of if you got a press guy you want to try to build his off technique if you got an off guy you want to try to build his press technique so he can be the complete corner and not just one dimensional so the great ones can do both oh yeah the great ones can do both for sure Okay, so a guy like Deion Sanders could probably have done both. Well, yeah, Deion, Deion could have did anything he wanted to do. <laughs> I mean, with his speed and size, yeah. I mean, he, he could have done anything he wanted to do. Yeah, no question. Yeah, we got to get him on this podcast. <laughs> That'd be dope. Let's do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll head down and see him in Dallas. I, yeah, we should do that because I, I think it would be sort of fun to get you two together. Uh, 
And, and, and I think there, there's a lot to this. You know, I, I have noticed with you because of your mindset as a player, you have been able to develop that in, in young football players coming right out of high school. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, the, the, that has been maybe the most fascinating part of my, you know, experience to watch you coach. You know, I see what you're getting out of these guys and the extra work that guys are putting in at your position. Um, you know, you know, and, and I know some, how many times in the fall, you know, I'd be coming in, you know, we'd be late at night and you're in, you're in the room down the hall and the defensive backs are in there and they're, you know, it didn't matter what, what the game, what the score was the week before. These guys just kept preparing um, because every game was really important to them and you saw their progress and their growth, you know. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing when you get a lot of young guys, you just kind of drill it into them that, you know, it's going to change. It's going to change. You just got to stick with it and keep teaching them and teaching them how to watch film, how to study their opponent, uh, because that's half the battle. If you know what to expect when you get on the field, then it's going to allow you to play a lot faster. Um, you know, guys don't even realize that a receiver, when he lines up, he already has mannerisms that he's yes. been doing for mm-hmm. weeks on weeks and he doesn't even notice it. So when you can pick those things up and real recognize them, then it's going to give you a little bit more of an advantage. Now, let me ask you, shift gears for a second here to um, tackling, mm-hmm. okay? Because, like we said before, you know, a guy like, you know, Troy Palomalu is a great open field tackler, you know, mm-hmm. secure, makes makes plays in that respect. Um and there's probably more pressure on them to tackle than a defensive lineman per se, because he's got help from backers. He, you know, we're fitting and getting all that taken care of. So, what what is your your thoughts on teaching proper tackling to defensive backs? Because there, there's a few, you know, you see some of the things that um, the Seattle Seahawks have done with rugby tackling and so forth, and 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 I, I've seen coaches waver back and forth maybe create a hybrid system so what have, what have you thought about that per se because you want to keep them safe you know yeah you you got to teach them the fundamentals of tackling you know one thing about uh, guys that end up getting hurt or um, guys that miss tackles a lot are you know typically resorts back to their body position what position are you in when you go to make the tackle um, that's how guys miss tackles and end up getting hurt. Guys that lean with their head instead of their shoulders, um, you know, those are things that you want to try to avoid. So you teach them the, the progression of it. You want them to come into a tackle, break down, be in a position to tackle. Um, we call it the shimmy where it's like near foot, near shoulder, so you mm-hmm. can start to break down in case a guy does make a move or change, change the direction on you. You can change the direction a lot faster. Um, and not be in a long stride all the time. So when the guy makes a move, you cross over step and you get out of position and that ultimately mm-hmm. miss a tackle. Um, then you, you shoot them, you teach them how to shoot their uppercuts when they do engage uh, with their shoulders and their eyes up, shoot two uppercuts and try to grab cloth on the back of the jersey. You know, those, those are the fundamentals of tackling. And then you kind of get into the progression of it when you when you talk about um, breaking down, you know, you get, you get into a fit tackle position where you just teach them how to fit a guy up, uh, teach them to roll tackle like the Seahawk tackling drill where you, you teach them to grab and roll um, because ultimately in the open field you want to try to give yourself every advantage of, of mm-hmm. the tackle. You don't just want to go into the tackle and then a guy, the guy is kind of slippery. He can kind of get out of it. You, uh, you tackle okay. and roll like a gator. That way, you know, it kind of, what, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean? You know how a gator when they when they attack something an alligator? And, yeah, and they, right, they give grab, it to me. They grab on. They <laughs> grab on to something, and then they start rolling in the circle. Oh, so that, okay. That's that's what you want to do as a as a defensive back going into a tackle, especially when you got a big running back and you get a hold of his legs. You want to roll and twist so you can take him down to the ground. Oh, okay. So in essence, you're teaching the fundamental fit of a tackle, mm-hmm. but. In the end, you got to get your guy down, and yeah. and what I've been you know hearing guys talk about rugby tackling and all that is basically that is just yeah. use their weight and you know spin mm-hmm. roll and you get your man down. Oh yeah, that'll that'll help you get them down on the ground. 
Um, and then, you know, they do the drive for five, which is just fitting a guy up, running your feet on contact. That 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 is a very good um, tackling drill that you can use, very effective uh, to keep guys up. Uh, it's a good for thudding in practice and mm-hmm. stuff like that. It gives you an idea of, of how to tackle um, a guy by fitting him up. Um, then the profile tackle, angle tackles, um, again, near foot, near shoulder. You want to put your eyes on the nearest target, which is the hip to the near peck, and run okay. your feet on contact, get your head across the bow, and, and you know, again, still use the gator roll technique. If you can't, If you don't take them down right away, Go ahead and go down to his legs and gator roll, and that'll help you get him down. Yeah, because that, that's critical. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, I mean that makes sense. Now you you put it all together for me. I mean, obviously, I've never coached that position, and it's just sort of interesting. I've just never seen, and I'll, I'll say it again, I've just never seen a group come so far in so, such a short period of time mm-hmm. with uh, having been so inexperienced. You yeah. Know? So I, I'm really fired up to see things as we progress. Um, Let's wrap this up here with uh, a, another question regarding playing together. All right? You know, the, the secondary, it's vital they play together because, uh, you know, all this stuff, they want to keep everything in front of them, right? Mm-hmm. So how do you teach your players the concept of playing together so you, you can do your best to eliminate those explosive plays? Uh, I think it, it starts outside of football, mm-hmm. you know, Guys that hang out together ultimately get to know each other, know what a guy's all about, know how a guy is, his demeanor, his mannerisms, all the different characteristics that make up that guy as a player. Um, Then you start to see that when the guy builds a connection off the field, once they get on the field, they kind of communicate better. Uh They get to know each other. You know, they, they develop a relationship, and then they don't make as many mistakes. When you go into it and you don't really know the guy playing next to you, uh, especially like going into college, you don't. You, these guys come mm-hmm. from all over the place, and they don't really know each other. And you tell them, okay, go out there and play cover four or cover two. They're going to do it by the book. Mm. And then there's no adjustments being made. But once they get to know each other, then they kind of know how one guy's going to play. And if he's an aggressive mindset type of guy, they know, like the safety knows, if the corner's aggressive – He's he's going to drive a route, so now I know I can protect him a little bit and vice versa. So, I mean, you start building a connection of getting guys to play together by trying to enforce them to to take it upon themselves to hang out and get to know each other. The more you spend time with a guy, the better you're going to be able to play with him. That's awesome. I, I never heard it quite described that way, you know, and, and I, I guess I'm more intrigued now than ever as you say that because it's like I, I've seen, and this is – you know, sort of off in a different direction, but it still deals with the team, you know, because it's like, you know, I, I'm sitting here and we're, we're developing a young team. Mm-hmm. And I have been at places where sometimes it's the offense against the defense, you know, it's, and then all of a sudden you get out in a game and it's totally disjointed and you lose games because, oh, the offense is scoring 50 points, the defense gets used to giving up points, or vice versa. The mm-hmm. defense is locking people down. The offense feels like they don't have to do as much. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it, you, you know, you've been, I'm sure, part of some of that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. right? And, it's, and as I see it, um, you're, the concept that you brought up about hanging out together, being together, building that culture of, um, you know, everybody calls it family atmosphere, but, but you, you know each other. You know, and, and I think, how do you think we could do that with our team? So the guys um, play um, all for each other because, you know, you've got offense, defense, kicking game, and, you know, you, you've got so many things going on. How can we get our team to a point where it's like, hey, you know what? Let's all play together. And, and it is no you know, we're all yellow jackets and that's all that should matter. So what do you see out there with the great teams that do that? Uh, I think I think a lot of the guys, it, it all kind of goes back to hanging out together. So, you know, just different experiments, you know, wide receivers hanging out with DBs or, you know, running backs hanging out with the linebackers just so they can see how one another thinks and plays the game. And it kind of gives them a little bit, of an understanding because most running backs when they go to college to play running back 
they don't know what the what entails to play linebacker in uh -huh. college. They know how to do it from a high school standpoint because most running backs play linebacker in high school or or DB. Mm -hmm. So they, they can kind of see it from that point of view, but they don't really know the the intangibles that go into it. So you kind of – if you, you hang out with a guy from a different position, that's one of the best ways I could I could say – that you can start to build that family atmosphere. Because I hung out with a lot of our receivers at Iowa, and they taught me a lot of different things that they probably didn't even know they were teaching me. Mm -hmm. But it gave me a little bit of an edge over all the other receivers that I faced because I knew what to expect just from hanging out with those guys because everybody learns and does something of a variation of, of the same way. So, um, And it started to bring our team together. Um, because we all hung out together. We all did yeah. a little bit of um, things off the field together. So, you know, it kind of built that environment and atmosphere. Yeah, that camaraderie really makes a good difference. And I, I, I like that. I mean, it, it's something that um, sometimes we do it by accident, you know. But, mm -hmm. but to build this, uh, you know, into a championship uh, program, uh, th th those are vital. I mean, I, I can see that because it's almost like, in this day and age, you can't win with just one side of the ball. No, you can't. I mean, there's, it just doesn't happen. You know, there'll be games that, hey, hey, the defense showed out and they did what they need to do, and sometimes the offense will do that. And But in the end, you just have to win by one point. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, you know, so it's like however it is. I mean, it may be the goal line stand that wins it or it may be that last, you know, that going for two to win it. You don't know what it's going to be. And I think when you're developing a culture like we are embarking on right now, um, you know, and, and honestly out there for people listening, I I learn more from our coaches than I than they certainly learn from me. And, and it's sort of fun just to be able to to have a group like this and learn from them and, and realize that we're all in this together. Everybody can help each other out. And, and I, I genuinely believe that we're doing that as a staff right now. So um, I think that's important. I hope the insight that Coach Johnson uh, has given you uh, lifts the veil on that uh, critical uh, secondary position uh, of playing the cornerback or the safety and all the intricacies of this. We could probably talk a few hours just on the play of the secondary. Yeah. I mean, we haven't really talked a scheme or anything like that, but we're just, just basic type of things that we look for here at Defiance College um, to help us develop the finest defensive back core in small college football. And that's that's what we're – we're heading towards, right, Coach? That's the that's the goal. Yeah, that's where we're going to get to. Thanks for coming on the show today, Coach. And, uh, hey, let's have a great spring ball. Let's do it. Okay. Thank you for joining us on this latest episode of the Swarm and Shoot football show. If you're listening to this podcast, make sure to subscribe in iTunes, give us a rating, comment on the show. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell in the top corner there, so you can get notifications when we release the next show. Feel free to comment below on a specific show, and we'll answer those questions as we need to. If you'd like to step up to the next level and get all kinds of updates, go to our website, swarmandshoot.com, where you'll get up-to-date alerts on all of our podcasts. You'll have the audio on there. There's actually a video player where you can scroll through each and every episode that we have um, of the podcast from the, from the YouTube version. So you never really have to leave the site. You also see some uh, features on various players, our coaching staff bios, all types of things going on in our program. Um, when our golf scramble is, different fundraisers we do just insights for you that take you to that next level which is what swarmandshoot.com will do for you take a minute and subscribe with your email when you log on there will actually probably be a pop-up about six seconds into it and it gives you a chance to go in and and that will put you into our email database so every time we update you get an email knowing that uh, we're basically set to go on the next episode of the podcast or any news that's coming out. Appreciate you uh, supporting the program and um, look forward to a wonderful season.